welcome to um, quite an important session and you can say insight into the writing um, of Usman um, Semben, who is presented today by Ekwa Agar, who is, um, who is basically looking at the, um, the genre of of um, his work. Right, introduction to you. Okay, uh, Ikwa Aga, thank you, Jeremiah, uh, for that lovely introduction as well. Um, I started off um, with a BA in political science, but um, also understanding that politics was also part of African history as well. Because mm -hmm. when you're looking at politics, you're looking at history, you're looking at literature, mm -hmm. you're looking at um, obviously business as well, because mm -hmm. um, to study that continent, um, you have to make sure that it's all done in its entirety as opposed to being split. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went in to do a Master's in French and Francophone Studies at mm -hmm. the University of Westminster, I was taken into this wonderful world of what was called the discourse of colon colonialism mm -hmm. and post-colonialism. Mm -hmm. reading and research mm. and along the way um, we were introduced to the world of Franz Fanon, um, the world of Aimé Césaire, mm -hmm. these are writers who were writing during the French colonial era mm -hmm. who were actually you now looking at the psychological damage mm -hmm. that colonialism had actually done. Mm -hmm. And when we say psychological it's not about the um, sort of obvious, you know, people are still walking around, you know, mm -hmm. people are professionals, people are still living, but there is something that was done to the psyche of, mm -hmm. you know, all colonized people. Mm -hmm. Along the way, um, these writers stood the ground and started reading in between the lines. Mm -hmm. Why is it that the negative representations of Africa are still around mm -hmm. after all the research that people um, had also done? Mm -hmm. Um, Usman Semben was from that school of thought as well because you mm -hmm. had writers who actually looked beyond the mm -hmm. colonial education system mm -hmm. and suddenly started finding out that apparently their system, especially the curriculum, was written in such a way to still promote an agenda. Mm -hmm. um, Usman Semben started questioning the idea of why it was that even after independence, mm -hmm in so-called African countries mm -hmm. who had living languages mm -hmm. that, you know, languages, the, 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 the languages mm. that were now still used, mm -hmm. you know, to develop or to continue, you know, to, um, you know, move Africa away from the anti-colonial, I mean, from the colonial struggle was yeah. still the language of the colonizer. Yeah. Either French or English language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is where he started questioning, you know, why this was happening. Okay. You know. So before we go on to the body and motivation behind his work, I, I still want to um, look at your your take, you know, where, where you're coming from. in terms of your research as an educator and as an educational provider, okay? What, well, in terms of studying um, your studies, post-colonialism, again, is, is a particular area, it's a genre. So can you explain a little bit more about what that means? I mean, obviously, again, um, that's what we're gonna discuss in, his, in the body of work, but, you know, what can we expect when you're studying post-colonialism, what you know, what does that, what does post-colonialism, colonialism mean? Mean, yes. <coughs> okay. Um, when we say post-colonialism, we're actually talking about the legacy of colonialism. Right. That legacy. What was actually left behind? Right. Okay. And also, we are now looking at an era of what we actually call the neo a new form of colonialism happening. Mm -hmm. Because the post means we got independence. Mm -hmm. How come we are still in, you know, a sort of um, 
a time warp mm -hmm. where when you go back into history you actually still see that most of the structures mm -hmm. you know that were imposed you know on psychological or physical mm -hmm. or mental structures that was imposed have not been removed. They're, they're still they're being still, imposed. They're still <laughs> imposed, but yeah. really from a different, from a new perspective. Yes. And now the idea of the post is yeah. who were the people who are now yeah. using this kind of tools? Yes. You know? And we're looking at different kind of tools. Is yeah. it a language? Is it the institutions? Mm -hmm. Remember that those institutions were not broken away. Yeah. The institutions were not re invented mm -hmm. they were not um kind of looked at properly and say okay you know this were the institutions that were actually imposed on us right okay. how are we going to move away from them mm -hmm. okay so essentially the area of study is looking at um an imperialist um regime or agenda um having a uh, having contact with africa setting up um, as you say, the institutions and places where imperialism can flourish, and yet after the the colonial era, the abolition as part of that as well of, of an enslavement of human beings, those institutions are still there. Still but they there. haven't been addressed as being well part of that colonial era, and actually it's a new era. So why are they still there? Why are they still there? And that's the question. I mean, you know, when, when we say institutions, you know, I mean, I'm not saying blow the buildings away. I mean, buildings are there, but what is going on in these buildings? You know, the documents that were used, the school curriculum that was systematically used, you know, to just actually produce certain elites. Yes. Yeah. Um, the banking system mm. that was used, you know, that monetary system that was actually introduced that was used as a form of exchange. Okay. The exchange has always been an unequal exchange. Okay. Mm -hmm. That exchange is still unequal. Mm -hmm. um, we look at um, the the schools, you know, the the even the churches, the religious organizations that came into Africa, mm -hmm. you know, to actually tell us that our own culture or what had we, what we had on the ground. Okay. Okay. We're gonna to get to that that bit okay. soon as well because again. Um, Sam Ben actually addresses that in one of his um, films. Yes, he does. So um, basically, you, you know, um, as an educator, your background is in African development, um, again, including neo-imperialism in, in a post-independent Africa. <laughs> and obviously the definitions for those being you, doing case studies, various um, specialist research, the impact, uh, the human impact, the, the psychological um, extremes of the interaction of that agenda um, and then of course going over into the social barriers and the issue of the diaspora and the home front as well. <laughs>